How do you produce award-winning content marketing and mental health care recruitment? In episode 42, I chat with Rowan Marriott. Rowan is head of resourcing at Signet Healthcare, and we talk about the why, what, and how of employer content marketing for his organization. I've been working with Rowan for over a year and a half now, and we've produced over 200 pieces of content in that time. We talk about the Talent Pool content series that has helped Signet Healthcare and generated extremely cost-effective results and won us an award at the same time. Let's get on with the chat. Morning, Rowan. How are you doing? I'm good, Chris. I'm very good. Thank you very much. Not bad. Happy Friday. Long, long week. And we're already in November. Scary That's times. It. Scary goodness. times. Where does the year go? <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks for joining. No, know you're busy. Um, I think Friday is always a good time for these kind of chats. Um, it's a nice way to see off the end, end of the week, I think, and um, take a bit of time out. Um, so let's just start off with with introducing yourself. Let's tell, tell us a bit about yourself and, uh, and what you do. Uh, So my name is Rowan Marriott. I'm the Head of Resourcing at Signet Healthcare. Um, I've been with the company for about four years. Uh, In fact, it was four years uh, just this week. Um, And my thank you very much. Uh, And and prior to that, I'd spent a lot of of years in uh, ad agency world uh, and, in fact, working for people like myself. So it's a very strange uh, situation I I found myself in. Absolutely love it. and, and I've learned loads there, but and also just chuck in there that uh, we're now award winning, aren't we, Chris? Oh yes, yeah, we are. Yeah, there. Yeah, to mention those that. people who can't see, <laughs> he's got he's showing the award. But yeah, the recruiter marketing awards, best use of content marketing. Yeah, so that was a uh, super happy about that, and um, that's something we're going to be talking a bit about today. I, um, apologies, listeners, but we can't help but talk about it. But it's actually given us a very good opportunity to talk about the work that we ha- did do. Um, because there's a lot of work that happened, um, and so we're super happy that we won an award. So, should we start off by um, just, I mean, obviously, you know, health and social care, you know, especially because of the pandemic, you know, has been kind of extra, extra high profile, you know, um, and obviously with Signet Healthcare being in, you know, in mental health, um, mental healthcare, then actually. It's very, very high profile. So, kind of let's 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 talk about the challenges that that you're facing as an organisation as and as your team. Sure. So, um, so in in the four years that I've been here, um, one thing has never changed, and that is getting good good candidates who are um, the right fit for the company um, across all of our job families. Really, we we are tasked with recruiting around five thousand people a year. Uh, all from skill shortage areas. So pandemic or no pandemic, the talent pools have been have been shrinking for some time. It's all documented. You just have to look on, you know, BBC News every single day at the moment, and, and you'll see it. It's not just our sector, mm. but in in healthcare, it, it's for as long as I've worked in it, it it's always been the same. So the challenge uh, really is is how you keep the wheels turning and how you keep getting people interested and attracting and how you get out of the uh, the kind of the mentality that most companies have in this sector, which is where you spray and pray, you know, how many mm. job boards can you post your adverts on? How cheap can you buy them for? Mm. Uh, and almost a, a hit and hope uh, to see, you know, if, if any of those shots actually turn into goals. So I think the, the challenge for us was really, how do you create your own audience? Because there is no audience that's just there as a given which is something mm. that you, you've said yourself many times. It's true, actually, that conference we did, uh, the, it was the EB Stars conference back in September. Um, we're talking about, you know, an audience isn't isn't found, it's created. You know, we've all seen it in, you know, in briefs, the audience, the audience, you know, the target audience. And of course, of course, you need to think about the, you know, the people you're wanting to, to recruit. But assuming that there's an audience there ready and waiting, uh, for your content is, I think is is a several decades out of date, and argue that it goes as far back as as um, when TVs had remote controls, and after that, yeah. pretty much you lost control over over your audience, really. So, and you know, it's got to be pretty pretty special content for someone to actually be waiting, ready for it. Um, I think we're then creeping into the realms of Star Wars trilogies, you know, <laughs> Netflix, all of that, where yeah. actually. You know, so really, typically, brands are actually the ones that need to think about 
how do you create the audience first? Um, yeah. And that's where, you know, see content, content marketing comes into it. Um, so, yeah, sorry, Rowan, uh, carry on. What, what else? Well, I, I think that? it's, it's um, I think you're dead right. And, um, you know, it goes as far as what I, I mentioned about the job boards. So the kind of, the, the, the days of putting your, advert not just of job boards but with a with a media a job board, you know a job related media and thinking that there's a load of candidates there waiting to apply for the job that you're posting that that's not a reality either you know yes there's obviously people there and there are job seekers but the good people a lot of the good people are mm -hmm. not looking for a job and people have talked about oh this is how we target passive job seekers and our media targets passive job seekers they've done that for for years now mm -hmm. um and I think it goes a little bit further than that because if you think of um, the kind of the thought and, and strategy goes into brand recognition for commercial brand. So um, it's not just a case of, you know, trying to get somebody when they're actually thirsty. It's, it's ha having your brand ingrained in their brain so that when they're going through their shopping journey, or whatever, they're thinking, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to choose that one. We're just trying to do the same thing. So if we've got a job on a job board, which we do, we use all the job boards, by the way. Uh, I'm not saying we don't. But to have any chance of getting that mental health nurse to click on your job, you've, you've got to have probably, according to LinkedIn, 33 brand interactions at some mm. point in that journey before they're even going to click on it, let alone apply. And the rest, my goodness. Yeah, so, you know, and we, we have learned the hard way. So, you know, I came in here um, to Signet. I, I brought in a social media company, you're absolutely brilliant, and they were generating leads. Um, but the leads were were candidates; they were not candidate applications. And converting those candidates into actual applications has proved pretty much impossible. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, over time, not only have we been trying to find enough of the right people, but it's actually converting those people as well. It has been absolutely. a real difficult balance to find. So, yeah, lots of challenges actually. Well, even like passive, the term passive job seeker. I've mentioned it before in previous episodes. Passive job seeker suggests that they even even got brain space for for looking for a job. You know, they might yeah. might consider it. And it's and there's there is so much talk in, in you know, employer branding, employer marketing, recruitment marketing. I mean, I all think it's it's one. I'm not keen about the different definitions really, but I think there's so much talk about what what's the message you can get across as as a brand. And I think I think that is true to a certain extent, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's that stuff which is the content you're going to be, you know, giving people that they actually find boring word for marketing, but useful. Yeah. <laughs> what's going yeah. to be that utility for them? What's going to be that inspiration for them? You know, where maybe they're hearing a story that is, is similar to theirs or that they, you know, aspire to. Um, and it's particularly when we're say looking at the kind of people that, that Signet Healthcare are recruiting, especially around say nurses, for example, you know, it's, you've, you've got to try a lot harder. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the biggest learning uh, experiences for me is that, you know, we, we spent a lot of time and effort on our EVP, so our employee value proposition, uh, mm. the, or the what's in it for me deal for candidates. Um, and, it's it, you know, a lot of it has been done before. So, you know, a lot of the academic studies are out there online that you can go and find. Uh, mm. But we did focus groups, we, we talked to competitors, we did it properly. So we knew that you know, across the board, we were putting out the right message. Uh, and, you know, I've got a strong media background, so we're putting across, out the right message across the right media platforms. Um, mm -hmm. And it ticks a lot of boxes, that does. And it does get you a response. And, yeah. But when you have to work harder and you have to get the results that aren't just out there, you have to take that on further and further. And you know what? It never ends. It just evolves. And I've heard this so many times that your brand evolves. I now get it. Now that I'm been in this job and I go to one of our hospitals that is completely different to the next one. So that overarching message, it does work across them both, but the, they're so individual. They've both got different USPs. Um, and the only way you can really bring that to life is through content. And it's through content with real people doing the job because the candidates out there, they don't want to hear from me or my team mm. as in the recruitment team or the exec they want to hear from people doing the job now. And it is so genuine and so real. And for me, it's the fav my favourite part of my job is when you capture that content, you think, ah, that's what it's all about. And you think, do you know what? If you do put that in the right, front of the right person, that's going to work. So um, 
but then you've got different job families within that hospital mm. and the content has to change for them as well. So mm. it is, it's kind of, it's never ending. I'm um, great for people like you who are setting out and, you know, drawing up business in this field. But yeah. um, the other thing is it's great for companies like us to have people like you um, to give us our expertise because you can so easily, and this is advice to anybody listening, you can so easily create a load of great content or, or that hero video and you go, yes, we, you know, I got you know, my company to basically do a video or we've done 10 videos, but actually, what are you going to do with those videos? I mean, one of yeah, the first yeah. things you did when you came and worked with Signet was repurpose all the videos we'd already done. And for mm -hmm. me, it was just a win, 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 because we'd got some great content and on the internal, you know, hiring managers was really engaged in it, mm -hmm. but I'd not used it, not properly. And it, it was, I was scared because it was a bit like, it feels a bit tick box. Oh no. But now what we've done is we've repositioned that. And, and yeah, we, I mean, we've won an award off the back of it. We've just exactly. taken it on and it's driven real results, which is, which just proves it works. Well, that was just the starting point, wasn't it? I think it's always, you always start with what you've got, isn't it? And that's, that's what happened. So yeah. uh, what, uh, 20 months ago, 18 months ago, I think it was where um, it's like, okay, you know, let's look at breaking down the content they already have. There's some gold in that content. So let's actually, you know, cut it up and multiply that by, you know, content to the power of goodness me, goodness how how many. So and um that was, yeah, so that was really the first step of of what we call and this is what we we called for the this is the title we gave it when we entered it for the um, recruitment marketing awards for the content marketing category is yep. the talent pool content series. So that was two hundred plus pieces of, of content and um and it did actually start with with taking those videos that already existed, um, but then it went on to on to other things as well. So let's let's have a bit bit of a chat about that. Um, so, in terms of the talent pool content series, really, it was it was about tapping into those things about coming up with content that's not only like story content that's going to you know help inspire people or or help them. On, see something in themselves in that story something they can generate rapport with um but it was also stuff around creating that utility for somebody so a nurse for example you know who we go look let's think about think about the people we're trying to get in front of and actually they are busy people we wrote it down they're busy people lots of time you know lots of lots of things to do and they're not necessarily going to be keeping an eye out for for a, a job opportunity so what can we do to to help them and make their life um, that much easier and that is ultimately a content marketing principle that we applied so so um let's what else what, what, do, you, what do you want to talk about first what what, what do we do should we talk about the podcast yeah well I, i'd probably go back a little bit further actually mm -hmm. so um i remember our, our first meeting it was actually over in, in the spring pod offices who have obviously been a big part of this um mm -hmm. and well, I was actually talking to to them and you about something different. It was about how we were going to attract uh, apprenticeships and could we do the same thing with student nurses. Um, and it soon became really, really apparent to me that actually the system or one of the systems that they have developed and use um, is the talent pool that I've always kind of dreamt of. And that is a place where you can nudge and nurture people. Um, and the way that you and them talked about how you communicate with that audience just struck a chord with me because that's something that we've never cracked so what we did is we started out and we got the we got the system and i said actually that's brilliant can we do it for for this which was the talent pool and the answer was yes so so we got that um like you say we we did reposition um you know some of the videos that we'd already got in doing that we got internal buy-in so people started seeing that we had more content we were using it on landing pages and social media ads that kind of thing which meant that actually this is a bit different and oh this is innovative so for me personally it you know it, it was a great uh, um bit of kudos for me because um i was doing something new that the business had never done before um what this then i don't do is as you, as you say it is podcast uh, you know um, and you know, we, we looked at the do the podcast and what's going to be useful so we just go back way back actually dvp research one of the big things that came out in nursing was that there is nowhere for nurses to hang out there's nowhere for them to go and get that advice or benchmark no obvious place anyway there was i think at the time there was like a a networking site on the guardian on guardian jobs but that was it it may have changed a little bit now but when we positioned the podcast we made 
a, a deal, didn't we? This was not going to be about jobs at all. Um, exactly. exactly. I, I mean, you know, this was going to be about why we care. And it wasn't just going to be about mm. Signet. Um, it was going to be about nursing. And, you know, you, you know you'd know, suggested the series, hadn't you? Exactly, yeah. And it's I think it's, you know, the right moment we're, we're developing the strategy for the podcast definitely was this is not about selling Signet, which kind of, when you think about it, it's like, hang on a minute, what we want to we want to hire people, so why wouldn't we be, you know, selling selling the heck out of, of Signet here? But it was very much, look, how can we be a utility for somebody? You know, how how can we actually, you know, help somebody who's, you know, they're, when they're busy caring for others, you know, how do they care for themselves and care for their career? You know, so actually we came up with an episode that was focused on that. It was like, okay, well, let's think about, you know, why we got into nursing in the first place. So we then tapped into. Um, service user and patient resident stories about what it means to them and and you know having someone saying you know, a parent saying well you know our son is now in a good place i i can actually sleep at night and that's amazing i mean that's just like absolutely, absolutely spot on so so it yeah. was very much about coming up with content that really wasn't about selling it because to be honest there's plenty of other content out there and of course we you know we'd, we put links into the career site in the episode descriptions, but ultimately it was about getting people at Signet and and service users and families talking about their experiences, and sharing their advice, and, and giving their giving their opinion. So that was definitely one part of it, and then that tied in really nicely with something else we did, which was the um, health healthcare career guide, wasn't it? Yeah. So I mean, I, I, absolutely, and like you say, you know. There is an obvious objective at the end of all this. So we, we need to find the right people for, for Signet. We, we need to find nurses in a skill shortage area. So whilst this isn't all about jobs, you know, there is a, an ultimate end goal. But um, I think what, what the approach we've taken was, was more of a, um, you know, insight and advice and a little bit of a benchmark as well. So that, um, you know, something that's really of interest, uh, um, you know, and something that, you know, a potential nurse would, would have a look at, listen to on the way home from a shift or on a break, um, really easy to digest uh, and to kind of consume. Um, brand recognition is there as well. Um, with a view to, should they make a decision at some point down the line, would we be considered? Uh, the Healthcare Career Guide was, was a, a, again, an innovate, innovative uh, suggestion. It was, you know, let's create a sub-brand which isn't just about Signet, it's in partnership with Signet. It's a virtual event, which came at great time because we're all locked down anyway. Um, but um, And that's just going to carry on, not the lockdown, hopefully, but the virtual event um, yeah. kind of strategy. But so, but we had, you know, experts by experience talking. We had people from uh, outside of Signet. We had senior people at Signet and people on the floor. And we gave advice from, you know, how to do, how to do your CV, how to be in an interview, uh, what it feels like to be a nurse, uh, in mental health, we talked about different service lines. There was so much information that actually got put into to that, but it wasn't a case of um, hang your hat on this one event and mm -hmm. you know drive thousands of people to get there. We, I mean, we had a good good turnout, um, but then it was available on demand and it's there and it's it's a tool for my team to use. It's a tool for those people who are involved to be dead proud of and show to their colleagues and 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 it just it goes on and on. Um, and mm -hmm. for us it's part of our integrated um marketing content campaign which has got many platforms uh and it just took you know this just slotted into one nicely so we have video we have podcasts and we even had a virtual event with live webinars and speakers so um you know we start to build something really good uh, and the results started coming through exactly and i think you mentioned about the health career guide you know we actually okay career guide actually getting people at signet to just talk about what they know about. And I think straight away that means you'll really use them as advocates because it's different just when you mentioned it before is that, you know, you give an employee a, a piece of employer branded content, a message, say, please, can you share this? Okay, they might share it, you know. But if you give them something where you've given them the opportunity to just talk and actually may maybe make themselves realize they know a lot and they've got a lot to share, you know, then you then give that to them to share and there's there's a much, much bigger chance they, they do it. So they're not just a, a vessel to share something, to share, you know, to, to benefit from your free reach, their free reach, but they are actually, they're contributors. They are, in a way, content content creators, 
really. Yeah, uh, and I it, think that changes and it, things. I think it does, and it doesn't. It doesn't work without them. The, the beauty of this, as well, um, which we've not mentioned yet, is that you know we we don't just pluck people out of the thin air and say, oh, you know that person will be good to put on a video. Great, tick a box. They, we've done a series of discovery sessions, workshops, mm-hmm. um, and these are some of the most real environments you find yourself in because you you basically got a room full of people from different. Uh, different backgrounds one thing that they've got in common is, is where they work another thing that they've got in common quite often is actually um, most people have got some sort of mental health uh, history in their close families or friends mm. um, and you know when they're in a, that kind of discovery environment talking about how they ended up in their job they, they come out with some stuff that their colleagues next to them who work with them every day say I never knew that about you That's and it true. just goes on to you know, so they're engaged. And then the content we're creating is, is by them. It's for them. Um, mm. So it actually, there's some ownership for them. It's not like, oh, yeah, we've got somebody in, in the recruitment team who, who's, who, you know, can do a, can get a video or sorted. And, and it's, it's like it's content created by by the people there. And that's what we try and do with the, the messages as well. So, mm. you know, the, the kind of the messages that lead the creative are all based on, on things that the managers have actually said, you know, this kind of person would work well for us. This, you know, this is what the ideal candidate needs to be like rather than just experience and skill and, and are they real? Um, mm. it, again, it, they, they feel engaged. And just like you said, Chris, none, none of this works if our own people don't share it because it, there's only so much you can get by putting a budget behind a campaign. Uh, if you've got actual people sharing on their own social media platforms, um, you know the the reach is huge; it's extended mm. straight away. But the the kind of the validity of what we're saying is just solid. It's like employee referral. You know, the best recruits will come from being referred from a colleague. This is exactly the same situation, um, and it also it almost turns into free advertising, which no one's going to turn down, are they? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think you know um, when you talk about you know doing those workshops and going going on site. I remember the one we we done one of the ones we done together, which is um, going to East London. And, um, you know, they're busy, obviously busy, you know, busy at the hospital and took time out to spend with us. And I think it's very much about we, we kind of took a journalistic angle to things. It's just really, you know, pulling out, I suppose, making people feel at ease, you know, and to pull out those 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 conversations and just being very curious and not just ratting out a load of questions and going, right, tick, we've done it. It's, it's just being generally interested in, in, in what they had to say. And there was a housekeeper. You know, was talking about about what she's done. So, you know, coming over to 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 the UK and and her story is fascinating. And then I think it was one of the support workers next to her saying, "Well, this place wouldn't run wouldn't run without you." And like yep. that was so like powerful. <laughs> it's like and actually oh, saw the kind of recognition in her face going, "It's like, oh well." I mean, it's you know, it's I think it's great. And we then translated that across into doing remote. Um, conversations, so you know, the Zoom style conversations, but making sure we treated it well in in post production to give it that yeah. kind of interview interview effect. And the, the the thing is, is that you're dead right, and I can't think when we it was actually it was Signet Beckton Hospital that we went to. Yes, um, yeah. But since we went there and then did that discovery, and it's not all just down to that one one session and what we created, no. but uh, it's been a turnaround. You know, we the we're almost to a point where we're fully recruited there. Um, and we were so far away from that. So um, it, it, the results, it just shows how the results come. So it changed everything. It changed the way that we positioned the adverts, the job board adverts. It changed the way that we spoke about um, Signet Beckton to candidates when they're coming through. It mm. changed the way that we came across because, like you say, the, the Zoom interviews, the, the video, the content that we did. Um, and then it, it played into all the campaigns. So actually, it just starts growing. You get credibility internally. But you get this momentum that you go, mm. do you know what? That becomes a success story. So why don't we take that and approach into another hospital? Um, and you went, you almost end up with a template. It's like I say, it evolves and it never ends and it just goes on and on and on. But you kind of make it easier because you, you get what works. And if you're kind of tracking the results and doing the, the evaluation of these campaigns as well, um, then you actually end up with a winning formula, which mm. again, working in recruitment, you take a bit of a beating, if I'm honest. But um it's good to have ammo. It's good to have the answers when people say, what else can we do? And when you've got a winning formula like this, you can say, 
you know what, there is something else you can do. And not only that, I know that the experience that we're going to give you in doing it is going to be second to none. You're going to love it. So no, it's it's been it's been an absolute pleasure. It's brilliant. Definitely, and I, I like you know like the fact that what we've also done is 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 kind of tap into that opinion piece. You could argue that well, you know, if you get employees to talk about their specialist area, then that that's not really recruitment, but it absolutely is. You know, it's about sitting down. You know, I I could potentially be you know listening, watching a video or listening to a podcast of someone that might be my future colleague. So to hear their yeah. professional opinion about something is really important. I think a good example of that is when we, I think you had an ad running in the, due to run in the British Medical Journal. And, yeah. you know, full page ad. It didn't, and it didn't feel right just to be putting a, an, an ad in there, which is, we're looking to recruit doctors and consultants, come here and apply. Or even a, a message which is, you know, which is about a rallying call about please come and you know come and join us actually what it was was to think about the british medical journal and let's actually think about content that is native to that journal and that is opinion yeah. so we did a a series of um a series which i think resulted in like 13 episodes um where we got a group of doctors and consultants so from various levels in the organization talking about the role of MDTs, you know, the, the important, you know, the role of training or actually, you know, moving from NHS to private sector. There was a whole lot of opinion based yeah. content there, which we kind of loaded into a a, a campaign site. Um, yeah. So actually that was, there's a lot of talk about short content. People's attention yeah. spans are illimited. Well, I don't know, Netflix wouldn't exist if that was always the case, you know. So, yeah. so it was about going... Obviously, we're not wanting to try and take on Netflix, but we're actually going. Let's 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 assume that. Well, let's create something that people can actually spend time dwelling on and listening yeah. to. So, so I think that was a kind of a, a nice thing to add into the what we what one typically sees in the employer branding, employer marketing world, which is which is stories from employees. Those stories are no doubt important, but I yeah, think definitely, opinion is is also extremely important because. Yeah, is that opinion that you work with in the future if you decide to join? I think I think it's really important to have a mix, isn't it? So mm. uh, things don't become stale and it doesn't become the same old. Um, I think what would be really useful right now is to um, to anyone listening to this is if you to give your view on its links with Netflix. Netflix is on uh, serializing everything. You know, in in Signet now, I know that you you help us uh, in in marketing. You help us with internal comms, uh, and podcasts have become a, a currency in Signet, which is fantastic. Mm. And I hear, oh, we're doing a series, or this is going to be the second episode. So, do, what? How do you kind of put that in a you know, you, you know, your view on serializing everything? I think I uh, so let's like take as soon as you say that, I think about the the employer brand video. You know, you spend a good chunk of change on you know to invest in an employer brand video. And it kind of goes out there. You might have a few edits from it, short edits, but you're not really sweating that asset as much as possible. So I think any content you have, you need to actually make sure you, you're kind of timesing it to the power of five, 10 to 10. You know, So let's take a blog post as an example. You create one blog post, and well, actually that in itself could be 10 pieces. Because that yeah. blog post could be connected to a podcast episode which then yep. could be would be connected to in fact something we're doing right now actually is in production which is creating a series of of um, image quotes which are snippets from the podcast yep. um and actually also creating audio snippets now i say that when i was looking at this there's like god this takes a bit of time but you know what <laughs> it's, it's so worth it it's yeah. so worth it so i think absolutely a you know make sure that make sure that you are multiplying your content by at least five times because yep. it goes back to that thing about i suppose brand's assumption that an audience is always there ready and waiting and that oh well they've already seen it or they've already yep. seen that video or they've already seen that blog post but yet they might have they might have forgotten about it god forbid or you know what no they haven't seen it yet going back yep. to your google's 33 touch points before they before anyone yeah. does anything so i think that's it's not repetition it's it's re-emphasis and you can tell the same provide the same piece of information in different formats and in different ways to emphasize yeah. that, that that message so definitely if you're if you've got a piece of content that you spent time and money like an like in a podcast episode 
or a video and you're not serializing it then you're really not doing the initial work any any justice whatsoever yeah i think i think you're dead right I mean, you know we've talked about um you know seo projects linked with the career site and you know where you're going to get the content from and who needs to do that and, and you, you kind of said well really you've got it all there in the in the videos yeah. in the podcast it's just a case of getting a, a writing a written up version it could live as a blog like you just said or you know it can be woven into your uh your career site or the landing pages that sit behind it um and you're right it just has it has so many more legs and i think a lot of a lot of companies are so busy a lot of people are so busy putting out fires and doing ad hoc stuff is that sometimes getting that helicopter view of how it all links together just it goes missing and when you get that right i think that's you know if you were going to do real exercise on return on investment and, and value that approach would, would absolutely resonate because it'd be like this is what you're getting because if you take those individual pieces and you go and outsource them to a full service agency you know that you're talking a lot of money and you know I'm not going to disclose it on, on this podcast, but the investment that we put into what we've done is nothing compared to what's what I've seen in the past. You no, know, um, no. and it's and it's not it's not been driven by cost at all, not at all. It's been driven by the quality of the content and using the right people who are the best mm. at what they do. Um, and as a result, you know, we we've got something that is now just going to go on, hopefully uh, forever, and just evolve as as we, our brand gets bigger. Exactly, and that's like that's. I, mean, I think you know we can definitely pick up a conversation again you know for future episodes i think because as you say this is a long-term thing so but let's kind yeah. of let's, let's start, start to wrap things up a little bit but i think now my mind naturally goes to this thing about long-term commitment okay so yeah. content marketing absolutely is a long-term term commitment it's about building your own audience to make sure that then they are actually your audience and then you serve that audience with with, with content that is going to you know, turn them into eventually into candidates. There, of course, be times when you can actually convert someone as quickly as possible, but it's on their terms, not, not yours, to be totally honest. Yeah. So that long-term commitment is really, really important. Um, so, you know, you you spent when you you know started out at Signet, you know, you were building up this the foundation, the solid foundation, which is great of getting the employer brand in in, you know, in place, and then for the past eighteen months we've been really kind of applying these content marketing principles to what, what you've been doing. So what's kind of your, what's your, what advice would you, would you give people who are going, look, actually I want to, I want to start doing some or more of this. Um, how, how do they, how do they get it done? Is there an element of buy-in here? To get yeah. In the business? Yeah. I, I, I think that there, there absolutely is. So, um, we, you know, with my old ad agencies kind of sales hat on, you know, all it all begins with what is the what is the pain, and so you know, in in my world, the pain is trying to recruit the right kind of candidates to come and work in a hospital or a care home setting, who are going to give quality care to the people who are really, really in need of, of quality care. So, um, and there's not many of those good people out there. So, I think what what you need to do is address the pain with a, kind of a new approach so and and data a data driven decision is always a good one so Absolutely. you know a lot of a lot of people who work in recruitment or resourcing will be getting all the time why isn't our job number one on indeed why isn't our job you know uh, on the first page of total jobs or the first page of cv library or, or the other brands mm -hmm. available um, <laughs> and without the question of is it in the right place? Have we got enough people looking at that job? So it is a battle because you're kind of changing the norm. However, be confident because the, the world of um, kind of content is changing. Everybody, everybody pretty much has, has got a phone. You go, I've, 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 I've got four kids, right? And every time we've had a kid and I've been in a hospital, you can see the nurses on their breaks, on their phones, and they will mm. be on social media and they'll be scrolling and liking and swiping mm. and all the rest of it. To think that those people are red hot leads about to apply for a job is 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 crazy. But Absolutely. what you want to do is take them on that journey to a place where at some point when they're considering a job, they've seen your brand and the content you're putting out numerous times. So I think my my advice would be to let data back up why you're doing something. Um also don't be kind of bluffed by the fact that creating a an EB video or 
a piece of content has to cost tens of thousands because it absolutely doesn't. You can start off small. You can do it in bite size. Chris, how many times have we done a, a Zoom video and done a quick edit for a campaign? You can. There's so many different ways you can do this. Mm. Um, but massive, massive bit of advice would be to pilot it. Never think that this is just going to be rolled out across everything. Just pick a site, pick a job, pick a person, get something that's quality, pilot it, and then roll it out, and then the results will tell speak for themselves. Uh, and the, the last thing that I would say just on that, I mean, there's loads to it, is what I've said a few times here, is that there's nothing better than having the people involved in it feel like they have created this, that they it's theirs, and it, it belongs to them, and it's for them, and it's for the place that you're trying to recruit to for them. Um, you know, I never turn around, I say to thank you to people, but I don't, there's no kind of incentive, because this is, like a hard incentive, which might be sound a bit mean, but this is for for them. They genuinely get excited that they're doing something a bit different. It's a new experience, mm. and it's to help help them in in their day to day job. And you know, the people in our sites, they get they get it. They understand why we're doing it. Uh, I think that the challenge is getting buy in from you know those your peers, etc., uh, and getting budget as well is is always tough. But I would go and find examples of other companies that do it well, and that's always mm. a a, a pretty good way um, to, to get people to change their minds. Exactly. I think, yeah, that absolutely the piloting is something we've, 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 you've done a lot. And I think it's, you know, it, it's not that there's not going to be the direct action activity happening because there is, as you say, you're on the job boards. That's all there. You know, it's about going bit by bit going, let's, let's, we know this should be um, a much bigger part of anyone's budget. But actually, we know that that's not necessarily achievable straight away. And actually, it's probably not the best way of doing it because you want to build the confidence of teams and the organization of taking that new approach. So piloting it is absolutely, absolutely perfect because ultimately, you know, you should be looking in 18 months time as, a, as an organization thinking about, you know, doing more content marketing going, you know, yes, we'll get our a, a direct benefit from it. But ultimately, this is a, a long term thing. And, you know, yep. long term is is a year, is two years. And that still fits in the cycle of, of people in roles that, you know, how long do they stay in the organization for? So you're still going to absolutely get a benefit from it. And more yep. importantly, the organization is going to benefit benefit from it as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, absolutely. I think, you know, kind of final comment really for, for me, um, I think would be, you know, we, we started off talking about, you know, this, this podcast has been... Uh, put on a platform because, uh, as I mentioned before, we, we did re recently win an award at the Recruit Marketing Awards mm -hmm. uh, for, for use of content. But the, the results are, you know, we've not really mentioned, there's over a thousand people in the talent pool across mm -hmm. loads of different job roles from caring support workers, you know, entry level roles to nurses uh, and even doctors in a talent pool. And they're not hard applications. And our job now is to get them through that process and nudge them and nurture them, as I mentioned. Um, it would be really good to come back on here in, in a few months' time, in six months' time, to say what actually happened and how did we get those down that conversion funnel? Because that's the mm. biggest, biggest bit that does worry you. Not only that, though, what happened next with Sigma? Because we've got this platform, we got we got the award, we've got a bit of kudos. So what happens next year? Do we get more more budget for it? Do we get the opportunity to push the boundaries a bit? Uh, I mean, we've got a plan. We talked about it the other day. I'm yeah. genuinely excited, but mm. I think if people are interested in, in, in this podcast and hearing a follow-up, I'd be more than happy to come back and say, look, this is where it went next. And, and you know, to, to give advice to anyone else who's, who's trying it. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's you know, definitely worth picking it up again and kind of like plotting, a, kind of documenting the next stage in, in Sigma's yeah. journey for sure. Because, yeah, it's, I think, another, I suppose, the final bit of advice, I suppose, for me is, is, is about, yeah, it can be easy just to churn out the same approach. Um, and kind of get into the groove of of doing that kind of that you know a particular type of content or doing things in a particular way. But it's always good to take a bit of a step back and go, look, what can we what can we do new? And if you can look at maybe ten percent, twenty percent of what you're doing now, and apply that to doing something new, that ten or twenty percent becomes your mainstream in say you know a year's time. And it goes back yeah. to that piloting thing. Let's do some new things. To see what happens and then you know scale up scale that new approach so actually it is constantly evolving so yeah we'd definitely be happy to get you get you back on the uh, the pod to, to chat about it Ro. great stuff nice okay to talk cheers to you. for that Ro.
enjoy the rest of your uh, your day and uh, enjoy the weekend when you get there. Well do you too. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Bye. Cheers. Thanks for listening. And if you enjoyed what you heard, then please feel free to subscribe. And it would be awesome if you could leave a review as well. It really does help.